Hello, I'm Joanne and this is Relax for a While. I create soothing videos to help you drift off to sleep. If you enjoy my videos and find them helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe, and click on the notification bell. My friend, I hope you enjoy this video. May it bring you restful sleep. Tonight I will be reading Chapter 3 from the book Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder. This story takes place in 1871 and is about a young girl by the name of Laura Ingalls and her family who live in a house in the woods and about the challenges and the joys of pioneer life. And so if you haven't already, Perhaps you can shift around into a comfortable sleep position that feels just right for you. And as you begin to settle in, you can notice the sounds around you. The sounds that are close by. And the sounds that are further away. Notice the various places of pressure where your body meets the surface below. And as you arrive now into this present moment, give yourself permission to let go and relax. To let go of any holding. To let go of tension, thoughts, to let go of the day, and enjoy this quiet moment of rest and relaxation as you drift off. And so as always, my friend, settling comfortably under the covers. Take a full, comfortable breath. And as you exhale, relax and let go. Allow any tension to just melt away. Letting your body sink deeper and deeper down into the softness of your bed. There is nothing else to do and nowhere else to be. So just lay back, relax, and enjoy the story. Every evening before he began to tell stories, Pa made the bullets for his next day's hunting. Laura and Mary helped him. They brought the big, long-handled spoon and the box full of its bits of lead and the bullet mold. Then while he squatted on the hearth and made the bullets, they sat one on each side of him and watched. First he melted the bits of lead and the big spoon held in the coals. When the lead was melted, he poured it carefully from the spoon into the little hole in the bullet mold. He waited a minute, then he opened the mold and out dropped a bright new bullet onto the hearth. The bullet was too hot to touch, but it shone so temptingly that sometimes Laura or Mary could not help touching it. Then they'd burn their fingers, but they did not say anything because Pa had told them never to touch a new bullet. If they burned their fingers, that was their own fault. They should have minded him. So they put their fingers in their mouths to cool them, and watched Pa make more bullets. There would be a shining pile of them on the hearth before Pa stopped. 
he let them cool. Then, with his jackknife, he trimmed off the little lumps left by the hole in the mold. He gathered up the tiny shavings of lead and saved them carefully to melt again the next time he made bullets. The finished bullets he put into his bullet pouch. This was a little bag which Ma had made beautifully of buckskin from a buck Pa had shot. After the bullets were made, Pa would take his gun down from the wall and clean it. Out in the snowy woods all day, it might have gathered a little dampness, and the inside of the barrel was sure to be dirty from powder smoke. So Pa would take the ramrod from its place under the gun barrel and fasten a piece of clean cloth on its end. He stood the butt of the gun in a pan on the hearth and poured boiling water from the tea kettle into the gun barrel. Then quickly he dropped the ramrod in and rubbed it up and down, up and down, while the hot water blackened with powder smoke spurted out through the little hole on which the cap was placed when the gun was loaded. Pa kept pouring in more water and washing the gun barrel with the cloth on the ramrod until the water ran out clear. Then the gun was clean. The water must always be boiling so that the heated steel would dry instantly. Then Pa put a clean, greased rag on the ramrod, and while the gun barrel was still hot, he greased it well on the inside. With another clean, greased cloth, he rubbed it all over, outside, until every bit of it was oiled and sleek. After that, he rubbed and polished the gun stock, until the wood of it was bright and shining too. Now he was ready to load the gun again, and Laura and Mary must help him. Standing straight and tall, holding the long gun upright on its butt, while Laura and Mary stood on either side of him, Pa said, You watch me now, and tell me if I make a mistake. So they watched very carefully, but he never made a mistake. Laura handed him the smooth, polished cow horn full of gunpowder. The top of the horn was a little metal cap, Pa filled the cap full of the gunpowder and poured the powder down the barrel of the gun. Then he shook the gun a little and tapped the barrel to be sure that all the powder was together in the bottom. Where's my patch box? he asked then. And Mary gave him the little tin box full of little pieces of greased cloth. Pa laid one of these bits of greasy cloth over the muzzle of the gun put one of the shiny new bullets on it, and with the ramrod, he pushed the bullet and the cloth down the gun barrel. Then he pounded them tightly against the powder. When he hit them with the ramrod, the ramrod bounced up in the gun barrel, and Pa caught it and thrust it down again. He did this for a long time. Next, he put the ramrod back in its place against the gun barrel. Then, taking a box of caps from his pocket, he raised the hammer of the gun and slipped one of the little bright caps over the hollow pin that was under the hammer. He let the hammer down, slowly and carefully. If it came down quickly, bang, the gun would go off. Now the gun was loaded, and Pa laid it on its hooks over the door. When Pa was at home, the gun always lay across those two wooden hooks above the door. Pa had whittled the hooks out of a green stick with his knife and had driven their straight ends deep into holes in the log. The hooked ends curved upward and held the gun securely. The gun was always loaded and always above the door so that Pa could get it quickly and easily any time he needed a gun. When Pa went into the big woods, he always made sure that the bullet pouch was full of bullets and that the tin patch box and the box of caps were with it in his pockets. The powder horn and a small harp hatchet hung at his belt and he carried the gun ready loaded on his shoulder. He always reloaded the gun as soon as he had fired it, for, he said, he did not want to meet trouble with an empty gun. 
Whenever he shot at a wild animal, he had to stop and load the gun, measure the powder, put it in and shake it down, put in the patch and the bullet and pound them down, and then put a fresh cap under the hammer before he could shoot again. When he shot at a bear or a panther, he must kill it with the first shot. A wounded bear or a panther could kill a man before he had time to load his gun again. But Laura and Mary were never afraid when Pa went alone into the big woods. They knew he could always kill bears and panthers with the first shot. After the bullets were made and the gun was loaded, came storytelling time. Tell us about the voice in the woods, Laura would beg him. Pa crinkled up his eyes at her. Oh no, he said. You don't want to hear about the time I was a naughty little boy. Oh yes, we do, we do, Laura and Mary said. So Pa began. When I was a little boy, not much bigger than Mary, I had to go every afternoon to find the cows in the woods and drive them home. My father told me never to play by the way, but to hurry and bring the cows home before dark, because there were bears and wolves and panthers in the woods. One day, I started earlier than usual, so I thought I didn't need to hurry. There were so many things to see in the woods that I forgot that dark was coming. There were red squirrels in the trees, chipmunks scurrying through the leaves, and little rabbits playing games together in the open places. Little rabbits, you know, always have games together before they go to bed. I began to play I was a mighty hunter stalking the wild animals. And then all at once, I heard the birds twittering good night. It was dusky in the path and dark in the woods. I knew that I must get the cows home quickly or it would be black night before they were safe in the barn and I couldn't find the cows. I listened, but I could not hear their bells. I called, but the cows didn't come. I was afraid of the dark and the wild beasts, but I dared not go home to my father without the cows. So I ran through the woods, hunting and calling. All the time, the shadows were getting thicker and darker, and the woods seemed larger, and the trees and the bushes looked strange. I could not find the cows anywhere. I climbed up hills, looking for them and calling, and I went down into dark ravines, calling and looking. I stopped and listened for the cowbells, and there was not a sound but the rustling of leaves. Then I heard loud breathing and thought a panther was there in the dark behind me, but it was only my own breathing. My bare legs were scratched by the briars, and when I ran through the bushes, their branches struck me. But I kept on, looking and calling. I shouted with all my might. Right over my head, something asked, Who? My hair stood straight on end. Who? Who? The voice said again. And then how I did run. I forgot all about the cows. All I wanted was to get out of the dark woods to get home. That thing in the dark came after me and called again. Who? Who? I ran with all my might. I ran till I couldn't breathe and I still kept on running. Something grabbed my foot and down I went. Up I jumped and then I ran. Not even a wolf could have caught me. At last I came out of the dark woods by the barn. There stood all the cows, waiting to be let through the bars. I let them in, and then ran to the house. My father looked up and said, Young man, what makes you so late? Been playing by the way? I looked down at my feet, and then I saw that one big toenail had been torn clean off. I had been so scared that I had not felt it hurt till that minute. 
Pa always stopped telling the story here and waited until Laura said, Go on, Pa. Please, go on. Well, Pa said, Then your grandpa went out into the yard and cut a stout switch, and he came back into the house and gave me a good thrashing so that I would remember to mind him after that. A big boy nine years old is old enough to remember to mind, he said. There's a good reason for what I tell you to do, he said. And if you'll do as you're told, no harm will come to you. Yes, yes, Pa, Laura would say, bouncing up and down on Pa's knees. And then what did he say? He said, If you'd obeyed me as you should, you wouldn't have been out in the big woods after dark, and you wouldn't have been scared by a screech owl. And as the story now comes to an end, a feeling of deep rest and relaxation naturally flows through you because your mind is much more quiet and still now. And it feels easy to let go and to give way to this sleepy feeling. With each breath you take, it gets easier and easier. I'm just resting here now while enjoying this pleasant feeling of sleepy relaxation. Let it wrap around you like a cozy blanket, feeling safe, resting, and relaxing. And it feels wonderful to let go more and more. And just drifting down. Deeper and deeper down to restful sleep. It's just so easy. Slower and slower. Deeper and deeper. Relaxing and letting go. In your own time and in your own way, you can drift off into a restful sleep while enjoying a full night's rest. And you will awaken feeling refreshed and wonderful in every way. And so, my friend, sweet dreams, sleep well.